My real name is but you can call me Tyrone Jackson. So I'm an advantage player. What that means is I look for inherent advantages that can be gained in casino games, and I'm very good at it. You watch a movie, and you're like, how the hell can James Bond, Bruce Lee, one guy take out 50, 100 guys? I'm that guy. I've taken millions of dollars out of casinos all over the world. It's a war. Casinos do it to everyone else, to the tunes of billions of dollars every year. What's wrong with me taking a few thousand dollars a month out of a casino? What's wrong with that? I traveled the world taking down casinos by car counting. The typical pit boss is an older white guy. They have no respect for a guy that looks like me, and they think he's a nothing. He's certainly not an advantage player, anything but. I use that to my advantage. This is, this is mental warfare. So you have to figure out a way that you can continue to come look like a regular loser, but at the same time, continue to win. I developed many different personalities to, to achieve those goals. The athlete, this is a guy who's maybe a football player, basketball player. He's got a lot of money, but you don't recognize his name because he's deep on the bench. The uh, entertainer, you can be an opening act for a guy you've never heard of. I'm always the guy that you quite don't know who he is, but he has the talent to be who you thought he is. I'm that guy. I've been a doctor, I've been a lawyer, I've been a businessman, you name it, I've done it. Everything but a woman, but I'm working on that too. <laughs> so that guy is the guy that can come in and bet that amount of money for a short amount of time. Every now and then he can get lucky. I mean, hell, anybody can get lucky. I'm gonna get to live this kind of clandestine lifestyle and, and get the adrenaline from running from exit to exit, and you make some money. What could be better than that? But on the flip side, it's dangerous out there. It's a man-eat-man -man environment. You really need to be careful. You have to watch your back constantly. It is a war, it's a battle. You can get hurt. There's an entire community out here that we have. We have a network. We talk and we know what's going on in this casino, who to watch out for, that kind of thing. So I got a lead from the network of Advantage players. There was a particular casino that had just opened, had a hell of a promotion. The game was sweet. I thought that I would win a gazillion dollars. With car counting, there's a way to beat these games. I won every single and It was only a short amount of time, maybe 15 or 20 minutes, and I was up 20,000. Immediately, I can feel the tension at the table knew they weren't happy with me winning that amount of money, and especially in that short amount of time. They started not to like me. At first it was, oh, how you doing, Mr. Jackson? We love you, blah, blah, blah. Then it was like, oh, here comes this guy again. You know, they're whispering in the radio. They were out to get me. I wake up in the morning, phone rings, and it was the shift manager. And he gives you the song and dance that you can't play any longer, and you're gonna have to be escorted from your room. And I was told, not to go back down to the casino floor. Pfft. You think I'm gonna listen to that? I'm here to win and you know I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be stopped. Waited till the shift was over, went right back downstairs and re-engaged. It was on all over again. And there's a problem, because now I'm doing what they told me not to do. And they sent security to the table to escort me back up to my room. You know something's up, you just don't know what's up and what's gonna happen to you. You can feel the hair on your back being raised. It turned out the casino wasn't through with me. So we're gonna have to ask you to follow us. There have been stories of, of guys getting back roomed, which is when they take you to a room and they can physically do some bodily harm to you. What are they gonna do to me? Are they gonna hurt me? Are they gonna kill me? Don't know. It's scary. I have to go up to my room and pack. There's a guy standing there like he's like he's like we're on a date, but we're not. I'm packing my, my stuff and I'm like, what the f are you looking at me like that for? He's looking at me like I'm like I'm robbing a bank. And I'm, this isn't even his money. I'm like, you know, I'm trying to chat the guy up. The guy doesn't want to talk to me. Pack my things and when I go to the elevator, there's some guys standing there as if they're waiting for me. And I was so shook up. They follow me to my car. I want $20,000, which combined with a $50,000 bankroll meant that I had a total of 70,000 in cash. A lot of money. These guys are following me. I get in the car, and I'm gonna just drive off and be gone for a while, maybe things will cool down. The next thing you know, I'll pull up to the light, 
there was a car following me. I'm pulling off. They're, they're not driving aggressively, but aggressively enough to know that you're being followed. I make some wrong turns, they make the same wrong turns. Why are they following me? What are they going to do to me? I wouldn't imagine the guys from security are going to leave the property. Do they have that kind of jurisdiction and power? Are they supposed to do that? They did it. Were they security? Maybe they weren't security. Who knows? Can't be good. 70,000 on me. People killed a lot less than that. You don't know what they're capable of, and you have to think that it's a real possibility. My colleagues, some colleagues have been robbed and killed before. You gotta, you gotta think about that, especially when you're in the middle of nowhere. You don't know anybody. You do know how much money you have on you, and you do know you're by yourself. You don't have a weapon. What are you gonna do? I decided, after some quick thought, to turn around and head right back to the casino. My thought was, if I got off the property, I may be better. But that may have been a bad idea, because if you think about it, maybe I should stay on property where the cameras and stuff like that. But when you're under this kind of duress, you don't always seem clear. When I parked the car, they approached the car, and they want to speak with me. I don't want to talk to these guys. I don't know what they're going to say. But whatever it is, it can't be good. I turned around and slowly walked away. So at the edge of the hotel parking lot, there was a street and then a forest. And that's where I decided to go to try to get away and be safe. As I'm walking, they're following me. It seems like they're moving a little faster than I am. The walk became a jog. The jog became a run. And the run became a sprint up a hill into the woods, and then off I went. As they could take your money and take your life. Out here in the middle of the woods, these guys are on my tail. At this point, they were calling my name. Tyrone. We just want to talk to you, man. Talk about what? What are you going to do? Uh, there's nothing to talk about here. What is it? Why? No. I was sure they were out to get me. I'm not going to give you a chance to f me up. I'm, you're, going to have to, you're going to have to work real hard to f me up. I'm not going to give you a chance. They were shouting for me by my alias name, and I didn't want to make a sound. I'm describing it in minutes. It seems like it took 10 hours. You know, you're, you're caught in an ambush. What are you going to do? Yeah, there's no sign of him. Hiding in the woods like a, like a squirrel it was not fun. I was prepared to stay out there all night long if I had to. After a time, I ended up bolting for the parking lot to try to get away as fast as possible. Got in my car and got the hell out of there. I come up to a light that turns red, and I run through the light, get on the expressway, and I'm doing like 300 miles an hour. I even felt like the cameras at the at the toll booths were watching me. I, I've never felt so paranoid in my life. It's like, well, we know where he is, and I, I didn't feel comfortable until I got out of the state. I've never had that feeling before in my life. I can't describe it to you other than say that. I got away with it, and I was $20,000 rich. Ultimately, the money and I got home safe, and we were blessed to be alive. So there's been a few times I've had some extraordinary wins that stick to me to this day. On more than one occasion, I've won more than 50000 in one shoe in blackjack. To make $50,000 or more in 10 or 15 minutes is, I mean, who does that? You don't feel bad about taking that money. I don't feel bad at all. What's wrong with using your brain to solve problems? After all, isn't it what our entire civilization is built on? What's wrong with that? As long as you're using your mind and you're not actually cheating the game, well, that's fine. There was something really wrong with it. They'd have stopped us from playing a long time ago. Legally, that is. If you see me in the casino, it's probably already too late because I've already got their money. Don't tell anybody.